Hello there, I'm Shailene Cotton, here with The Gamer to help you decide which character background is right for you in Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. The good news is, unlike regular D&D, you don't need to spend hours writing your character's tragic backstory. Tiny Tina's Wonderlands offers a selection of five character backstory templates to choose from, and none of them involve dead parents. Why is this important in a game where you don't actually need to roleplay as a rogue tiefling with mommy issues for hours on end? Well, also unlike D&D, you won't need to roll for your starting stats. Your character background will decide that for you. Depending on the character background you choose, you will start your adventure with either an advantage or a disadvantage in certain stats. So, which character background should you pick? Well, that depends on what class you picked and your preferred playstyle. Which, when you think about it, is pretty much the same thing. Did you choose Stabomancer? Well, then you probably want to get up close and punch some folks. Did you gravitate towards the Spore Warden? Then you'll be hanging back and picking off enemies from afar. To decide which backstory is best for you, let's take a look at each character class and what backgrounds give you the biggest advantage. You want to stab? Then you'll need strength and dexterity to stay in the fray, and the wisdom to know when to stand back and cast some spells instead. Rogue Alchemist is going to be the best backstory for this class, with a plus 8 to wisdom, followed by either Village Idiot or Raised by Elves. This hammer-wielding dragon trainer needs a lot of strength and a lot of HP. For this reason, the Village Idiot backstory is a great choice for the plus 8 to strength. Veiled Monk isn't the worst option either, as it's one of the few backgrounds that doesn't put a ding in your constitution. You're a wizard, Fate Maker. This means you'll need dexterity and intelligence above all other stats. So, Raised by Elves or Failed Monk will be the best backstories for these stats. Raised by Elves for the plus 2 to dex, or Failed Monk for some extra int. Since Graveborn sacrifice their own health to use certain abilities, you'll need to be a bit beefy. That makes Constitution an essential stat, right alongside Intelligence and Wisdom for all those spells. Failed Monk and Rogue Alchemist will suit this class well. Failed Monk especially because it beefs up both intelligence and wisdom without sacrificing any constitution. Spore Warden is yet another class that thrives in attacking from afar while your little mushroom buddy takes all the aggro. Dexterity will increase your chances of hitting a crit, while Attunement lowers your action skill cooldown rate. That means more arrows and ice tornadoes for you. As such, you can't go wrong with Raised by Elves or Recovering Inventory Hoarder. Raised by Elves is just a perfect story for any class that relies on dexterity, and Inventory Hoarder is literally the only background that gives an advantage to your attunement stat. Perhaps even more punchy than the Stabomancer, the Brewer Zerker is born for close combat, and you'll need a lot of strength, a lot of constitution, and some attunement to minimize your cooldowns if possible. Village Idiot is the best backstory for this class by far, with a plus 8 to strength. Recovering Inventory Hoarder isn't the worst choice either, it'll beef up your attunement without taking too big of a ding on your constitution. If you already chose your character's backstory, don't panic. Please move away from the delete button. You aren't stuck with the stats you start the game with, no matter how poo-poo they are. Every time you level up, you are given a hero point that you can use to bump your stats. So, if your character backstory puts you at a disadvantage, you'll get plenty of chances to right your wrongs. The trade-off is that all that time you spend offsetting your start disadvantage could have been used to, you know, actually level the stats relevant to your class. At the end of the day, pick whatever tickles your fancy and have fun shooting, looting, hacking, slashing, and casting. For more tips and guides on Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, be sure to check out thegamer.com.